Hello! Or as in Germany, they say, Hello! Let's do a video about Germany. Today in Nerd History! At this point, Germany is basically infamous for their censorship of video games. In fact, all commercially released games have to adhere to a strict policy that's this 35 letter word that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Unterhaltungssoftware Selbstkontrolle. He's got it, somehow. But some of their censorship is weirder and more egregious than the rest. Let's look at the five weirdest ways that Germany has censored games. Number one, let's just get, you know, the obvious entry out of the way, Nazis and swastikas. As you can imagine, Germany does not take their history lightly, but that doesn't mean they want to forget it. Quite the opposite, in fact. But Nazis and everything that comes with them are a very sensitive subject. So if you're the developers of something like 10 Second Ninja and your main character is fighting Nazi robots in levels full of swastikas, you'll have to make a few compromises. Is it fair that video games have to censor themselves while Indiana Jones remains uncut? I mean, no, not really. But as we'll soon see, Germany does not recognize games as art. Thus, it doesn't offer them the same protections as it does other mediums. But publishers still want to get their games in German stores. It's the biggest market in Europe, even ahead of the UK. Not publishing your game in Germany is leaving a lot of money on the table. So even games with Nazis baked into their DNA, like 2014's Wolfenstein The New Order, have been changed to accommodate the local censors. The Wolfenstein series has always, always been about shooting Nazis in the face, so you can imagine that making the New Order fit German shelves was a tall order. Every single reference to Nazis was completely removed from the game. The bad guys are now simply called the Regime, and all swastikas were erased throughout the campaign, or replaced with the Wolfenstein logo. Besides some key visuals and dialogue being altered, the New Order largely remained the same story-wise. Even someone unfamiliar with the Wolfenstein series would find it patently obvious who the Regime were supposed to represent. It's sort of like me pixelating my hand while flipping you off. You can't exactly see it, but you totally know that I'm being a real rude crude dude. South Park is no stranger to censorship, so it should be no surprise that the Stick of Truth dealt with Nazi zombies just like the show dealt with images of Muhammad, using a series of strategically placed black boxes. In a way, you can kind of appreciate the transparency of this censorship. The big black bars communicate, somebody made us cover this stuff up, but everything else is presented as is. At the same time, it highlights how simultaneously strict and lax German censor rules are. Characters that are obviously Nazis can appear in video games, so long as they're not wearing Nazi-specific symbols. Remember how I mentioned that the Indiana Jones movies gotta mention the Nazis? Well, the Indiana Jones games were not afforded the same privileges. Whereas Wolfenstein went to impressive heights to localize their title for German players, the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade adventure game is something of a different story. All the swastikas and the adaptation are indeed removed, but in the most lazy, slipshod way possible. It looks like someone colored in the swastikas with MS Paint. The result is a bunch of flags with misshapen squares on them. This moment is based on a very memorable scene from the movie, so they couldn't very well leave it out. But it's especially strange to see an obviously censored swastika behind what's unambiguously Adolf Hitler giving the Nazi salute. Hell, despite allowing Hitler to autograph Henry Jones' diary, you can punch that dude right in the face. Note that the only real difference between the US and German versions of the scene is the swastika to the far right. They didn't even bother coloring in the flag dead center because it was already being obscured by a wall. And it's odd that the Last Crusade got away with depicting Hitler at all, especially because that seems to be a big no-no when it comes to modern German ports. Like a lot of the early entries in the series, Call of Duty Finest Hour takes place during World War II, so it makes sense that there would be a lot of German propaganda posters up in the streets of Germany and other European cities. You'd think that the historical nature of the game might preclude it from censorship, especially in a country where World War II documentaries air uncensored on a regular basis. But nah, Adolf's shitty mug is replaced by what appears to be a fold-out pin-up straight out of Tiger Beat Hitler Youth Edition. Though Hitler's face has been eradicated from contemporary German games, his name still lives on. Hearts of Iron 4 is a strategy game that, like the aforementioned Call of Duty title, takes place during World War II, so it seems like it'd be pretty impossible to fight against Hitler without representing him in the game. And in a way, the Fuhrer does appear, sort of. For most of the Western release, Hitler is unaltered, presumably because everyone wants the pleasure of knocking that shitty mustache off the Cretan's face. But in Germany, while Hitler remains a specifically named character in the game, his face is cloaked in shadow. The near silhouette kind of makes it look like Hitler's an unlockable character whose portrait will light up after you get a special achievement. And it's not just direct references to Hitler and the Nazis that have gotten the boot. The policy extends to logos that resemble the offending symbols. The skateboard brand Mystery was featured prominently in EA Skate 2, except in the case of Germany, in which the company's merch was excised completely. It has to do with Mystery's trademark logo, which does bear a resemblance to the Nazi SS lightning bolt. Believe it or not, this is the same problem that the band KISS ran into. Their logo is different on German album releases, but their music is the same, still, you know, kind of bad music. Kind of bad. 
The thing is, in the case of Skate 2, they removed all the mystery products, not just the ones that bear the logo. This made the German version of the game completely incompatible with the version that the rest of the world got. So German players hopping online could only play with similarly stiffed German players. As if playing a weird, neutered version of the game wasn't bad enough already. Number two, turning humans into robots. The majority of video games are violent one way or another. Violence is built into the system, in part because being able to erase something from existence is one of the easiest ways to afford a player the sense of agency in a virtual world. Germany also has some pretty strict policy about violence in video games, which has led developers to come up with some pretty interesting loopholes. As it turns out, Germany is not okay with humans exploding into bloody body parts, but is totally fine with robots meeting the very same fate. Just look at the German version of Team Fortress 2. Take a closer look at that. All the characters in German Team Fortress 2 are robots, meaning that when you shoot them, sparks fly out instead of bodily fluids. When the characters explode, instead of blood and body parts, there's grease and gears, and sometimes toy hamburgers. Here you can see that they used the MS Paint Bucket Fill to change the color of the blood to an oily black, and inserted a large coil where a spinal cord should be. While the goofy German version does end up accidentally fitting the tone of the series, it's a shame that Valve felt that they had to do this, especially because the original head already looks like something that would be out of the Flintstones. Team Fortress 2 didn't invent the human-robot transformation, though. The trend dates all the way back to the 90s. Not even the Nintendo 64 was safe. Though Turok Dinosaur Hunter is primarily known for hunting dinosaurs, there were plenty of other humanoid enemies in the first game. Of course, this changed from men with firearms to robots with laser swords for the German release. And honestly, this might be something of an improvement, because shooting dinosaurs and robots with a minigun sounds pretty close to the description of the best video game ever made. But if we want to talk actual contenders for the Game of Forever Pantheon, let's jump back to Valve, because Half-Life 1 also employed robots to replace human enemies. As if that wasn't dumb enough, these robot grunts also replaced every single character class in Team Fortress Classic. I'm not saying that every video game has to have fraggable human enemies in it, I'm just saying that it's very obvious when a game was designed for one thing, only to have it supplanted by something else. So far, the games we've covered are pretty tame by today's standards, but Soldier of Fortune 2's Ultra Violence retains its Ultra prefix to this day. It looks a little bit sillier now than it did in 2002, but Soldier of Fortune 2's main draw was allowing players to mutilate, dismember, and otherwise horribly disfigure enemies with non-stop gunfire. It was pretty controversial stateside, which didn't bode well for getting past the German censors. As you might have guessed, developer Raven Software got around this by making everybody... A robot! Unlike everything else we've mentioned so far, Soldier of Fortune 2 is at least somewhat grounded in the real world. Take away the fact that everybody seems to be a highly pressurized sack of cherry jello covered in skin, and it could almost resemble the real world. Soldier of Fortune 2 isn't a sci-fi game at heart, so where are the robots coming from? To justify these automatons, Raven Software created a new universe for Soldier of Fortune 2. The German version of the game takes place in an alternate dimension where androids have taken over the world. Seriously, when I said that everyone is a robot in Soldier of Fortune 2, I meant everyone, not just the enemies, the NPCs, and even the player character. The thing is, the game is otherwise mostly the same. As the intro explains, these androids wiped out their human masters in order to live out their days having families and working shitty jobs just like their human masters. Cool. Soldier of Fortune 2 wasn't the only game to completely roboticize its cast of characters. The biggest and most hilarious offender might be Command & Conquer Generals. Since the Command & Conquer games are traditionally real-time strategy games played from the top-down perspective, making every character in the game a robot doesn't have a huge effect. At first, sure, the soldiers make crinkly aluminum can sounds when you run them over with a tank, but what's extra special here are the titular generals. The default release of the game features actual portraits of real people that head up one of three different playable factions. But since everyone is a robot in the German edition of generals, that means each human represented in the game was subject to a completely, awesomely terrible transformation. Here you can see General Granger was corrupted by the Borg and went on to steal Jordy's visor. The other leaders in the game didn't fare much better. On the ground troops, also got artificial flavors as well, but there's one especially ridiculous case that might actually be an improvement. You see, the selectable faction controlled by the pictured generals includes the USA, China, and something called the Global Liberation Army, the latter of which is just a fancy way of saying the most stereotypical terrorists imaginable. Even in 2003, the guys behind 24 would probably be concerned about this depiction of Middle Eastern people. Case in point, one of the GLA units is a suicide bomber. Straight up, the German release took their usual robot assimilation a bit further in this case, replacing the suicide bomber, the unit is literally named Terrorist, with a bomb on wheels. Every now and again, seemingly silly censorship can wind up being a force of good. But as we're about to find out, sometimes it could be a ripoff. 
Number three, features and entire game modes removed from games. So far, the censorship we've been talking about has been mostly cosmetic. Painting a square over a swastika, or turning player characters into robots might be condescending and kind of stupid, but it doesn't actually affect the gameplay. Unfortunately, the playability of some games like Saints Row the Third are directly affected by these hyper-strict rules. Using people as human shields isn't the nicest thing you could do in a video game, but it's arguably an effective option for those of us who want to use it in an open world game. The idea being that you could grab anyone off the street and make them your own fleshy sandbag to hide from enemy gunfire. In the German version of the game, this ability is restricted to only other gang members. You can't make human shields out of civilians or cops. This doesn't make the game unbeatable, but it does reduce the amount of options you have compared to other versions of the exact same game around the world. A move list being altered is one thing, but excising entire game modes is another. Call of Duty World at War featured three basic modes that have since become staples of the series. In addition to the standard campaign and the endlessly popular multiplayer, World at War introduced the Zombies mode. And since the game took place during World War II, these members of the Evil and Dead were, predictably, wearing swastikas on their shoulders. But instead of removing the Nazi, from Nazi zombies, the German version of the game got rid of the mode altogether. A huge selling point for the game with hours of content was just gone. So why didn't they just remove all the emblems and insignias and retitle the game mode Racist Asshole Zombies? Well, probably the same reason that Capcom didn't release the Mercenaries mode in the German version of Resident Evil 4. I couldn't find any official word as to why Mercenaries mode, along with Assignment Ada, are present in every iteration of Resident Evil 4 except for the one that came out in Germany, but there's a persistent theory out there. In general, German censors are not fans of ascribing point values to kills in a game, which is why German players would not see a familiar plus 10 when they killed someone in a game of World at War. Since Mercenaries and Assignment Ada don't have actual narrative tied to them, the censors see it as more of a meaningless gore playground that only exists to allow psychopaths to live out their killing spree fantasies. This anti-rampage stance lines up with the German Grand Theft Auto 3, which saw the score attack rampage mode deleted from the game. The power-ups simply are not present in the censored version. Though modes cut from the game are quantifiable proof that Germany is getting less game than the rest of the world, there's still something to be said about compromising the integrity of the game's original vision. And in this case, that vision is usually a video game soaked in blood. Number four blood, gore, and violence toned way down. The U.S. and Europe have a very different way of seeing things when it comes to the media. The U.S. gets all uppity when there's even a hint of a nipple in something, but they're fine with having somebody's head get blown off from primetime TV. Similarly, gun violence is a little less tolerated in European broadcasts, but they're happy to feature a topless woman in a commercial for soup in a cup. That being said, the degree to which developers have to tone down the violence in their games is pretty extreme even compared to the treatment of violence in TV and movies in the same country. Horror games get the brunt of it, as you might imagine. In this scene from Silent Hill Homecoming, a man with cuts all over his body starts spontaneously bleeding from every pore, drenching himself in his own bodily fluids. It's a gruesome scene to be sure, but it's made much less effective in the German cut, in which this man does bear the wounds, but they remain scabbed and dry for the duration. But there's a difference between toning down graphic images and just pretending that they never existed in the first place. Now, the moment depicted here remains largely the same. There's a little less blood splatter in the German version, but in general, Silent Hill Homecoming focuses on the reaction of a man watching someone get literally ripped in half by Pyramid Head. It's a creative choice that makes you, the player, imagine what horrors this character could be witnessing, and it also probably saves the animators a bunch of time. Then the cutscene ends, and things become clearer. In the US, players are met by the bisected remains of the recently departed, but in Germany, the body's just gone, vaporized. All that's left is a bloodstain on the ground and the confounded look of the player's face. This phantom cleanup crew must be pretty busy because they've used their magical squeegees to clean up a ton of games, including Bulletstorm. Now, Bulletstorm is one of the most heavily edited games on the list, probably because the gameplay revolves around battering your enemies around the map in such an exaggerated way that it sort of resembles pinball. While the gory moment-to-moment -moment combos definitely suffer, I mean, when you kick a guy into a giant space cactus, you expect to see some blood, but the levels themselves have also been purified by the sensors. Bodies and blood Stains aren't exactly the most original forms of environmental storytelling in games, but taking that away removes the character from a game that builds its identity on cartoonish bloodshed. The way that violence is muted varies from game to game. Take Grand Theft Auto 3, for instance. In both versions, you can see the player mow down an innocent civilian, a heinous act that pretty much anyone who played GTA 3 has at least tried. For the Western release, comical squibs spurt out of every gunshot wound, but the German GTA 3 keeps things below PG-13, as the civilian dies a bloodless death. The NPC also drops no money as it dies in the German version, again a specific decision to limit the incentives to kill for points. 
The God of War series has always been uncompromising when it comes to violence, but the German version of the game has found a uniquely seamless way of avoiding the offending content. Pushing the camera up a couple feet is in some ways a cop-out, but like Silent Hill Homecoming, it makes you imagine something far worse than what American audiences actually saw. Maybe that same effect could be put to good use in the incinerator scene in Wolfenstein The New Order. As it is, the scene is pretty awful. Believe it or not, these are actually versions of the exact same scene. Upon awakening in an incinerator, BJ Blaskowitz takes the knife out of his gut and frees himself from the corpses hugging his body. The German release includes this scene, but it's almost unrecognizable. There aren't any bodies in the incinerator with BJ, but you can still see his left arm stuck in that same corpse-moving animation. Though the uncut version adds tension with the fires turning on and off below, the German cut nixes the blaze altogether. The omissions taken together suck any drama out of the scene, and worse yet, make it hard to tell what's actually happening. Even box art is not safe from censors. The American box art for Valve's zombie shooter Left 4 Dead is bold in its silliness, but the censored version is comparatively something of a head-scratcher. An undead hand showing the number 4 because it's missing a thumb is stupid, but in a fun way. The German box art, on the other hand, depicts an undead hand with a thumb folded over its palm, adding a bizarre amount of agency to a zombie who owns the appendage. It sort of ruins the joke, which is a shame because Germans are known worldwide for their freewheeling sense of humor. This probably has to do with Germany's issues of advertising games that it has deemed inappropriate. Who exactly is deciding what gets censored and what doesn't? Well, we should probably get to that. Number five, banning games without technically banning them. So why do developers go through such insane lengths to make their games palatable for the German audience? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Well, they could be put on the Index, a list of media assembled by a federal German agency. These indexed games aren't technically banned, they're just treated like pornography, which means they can't be advertised at all and they sometimes have to be cordoned off in a special adult section of the store. This has to do with Germany treating box art like an advertisement. The government is so serious about this that it's technically illegal to publish a list of games that are on the index because that's seen as advertising forbidden products. While it's not technically illegal to play these games, many retailers won't bother carrying them because it's kind of hard to sell a product that can't be advertised at all, so it's sort of a de facto ban. But something funny happened with 2006 Gears of War, one of the goriest franchises of the past decade. As you can probably guess, the USK refused to certify a video game in which you turn your enemies into ground beef with your chainsaw gun. But instead of resubmitting the game or making changes, Microsoft just ditched the German release entirely. Gears of War wasn't forbidden because there was nothing to forbid. But because death will find a way, the German market's demand drove a ton of copies to the country via imports. This was only legal because Gears of War wasn't on the index. The government, of course, stepped in and indexed the game voluntarily. And because of this incident, any future games that aren't certified are automatically indexed as well. Games held hostage by the index include Sega's Mad World, House of the Dead Overkill, and Aliens vs. Predator, along with notorious titles like Postal 2, Carmageddon, and Manhunt. Not all these games are great, but they're also not usually considered porn outside of Germany. There is some hope, however. After 10 years, a publisher can oppose the game's indexing, which means games like Doom and Quake are finally available. But it's not like the animators at id Software went back into the old game and reconfigured the way an imp crumples to the floor in a bloody heap when you blow it away with your shotgun. The fact of the matter is that these games didn't change over the years. We did. Teenagers and young adults who grew up in the early days of first-person shooters are now lawmakers, looking back in disbelief that anyone ever thought this rough mass of pixels could really warp a child into an unpleasant sociopath. Maybe someday the German censors will realign with the rest of the world or even the rest of Europe, but for the time being, with the way the world's going, they'll probably be okay blaming video games for a while longer. It's probably easier than facing the fact that humans are capable of terrible acts without the help of visual aids. But until then, I suppose a few more robots here and there isn't so bad.